I have always loved this intro. I'm going to use a beat buddy just for a metronome kind of a thing. Hoo it to me, ball. that far you get that far you've got the song hey Shane back with here from guitar work welcome back this is Jackson Brown's doctor my eyes fabulous song by a fabulous singer songwriter and lots more Jackson Brown coming your way for sure again doctor my eyes uh, thank you for coming back subscribing thumbs up have meant the world here in YouTube land I really appreciate really helps to keep the lights on here and a lot of your comments and suggestions go a long way thanks for that as well um, I will send you as always to patreon.com slash guitar work I, I got it all in one sheet here it's nice to have it just one sheet song sheet and uh, I'll be referring to this the entire time so you go grab those Patreon doesn't have to be a lifelong commitment. There's a whole bunch of songs up there. Go grab them, do all the play-alongs with me. And uh, people have been telling me it's been working for them. So we will do a full play-along. Uh, we'll do a slow play-along, maybe half the song played slowly, just to give you a chance to find it. And then toward the end, we'll do an entire play-along at full concert speed. Um, I have a capo on the first fret. I don't want to forget to mention that. Um, if you happen to see, uh, that's going to match the original version of the song, okay, on recording. If you happen to see videos out there on YouTube or whatever with Jackson Brown or somebody else playing it without a capo remember it's their prerogative whether they want to sing it higher or lower that day and uh, so the original had a capo on one um, or actually it's a piano I imagine the guitar player would be capable, but it, there's a whole lots of arguments about that as well. But Capo 1 will do the trick here today. Um, and uh, it's for your Patreon, we've got all that going on now. There's, the intro is super. I absolutely love this. Um, and I also cannot think of a better song. If you're struggling with bar chords, if you're getting there, but you just got to get it over the edge, this is the song for you. Because of this technique later on, I'll just grab here a G sharp minor. I'll go through it slowly in a second. I'll go. See how I'm on, on. So you're forcing you to do it's, it's, it's like doing calisthenics for bar chords so this is a great song to be, have going on in the background while you're working on other songs well it's going to improve your bar chords all around okay so the intro um, you're hearing on the piano on the piano background uh, intro eighth notes like that I've counted one and two and three I've got an E chord going on here and I'm playing the low E and then the D string your third thin I think it's there so one and two and three and four and one and two. There it is there. Good. Now that's tricky enough already if that's new to you. I'm, I'm, I'm resting my right hand on the bridge here and trying to get it all with a wrist motion. Otherwise I'd miss so often. Um, now that's what's going on. But what I might recommend, we'll go back to that. So what I might recommend as you get this going is just to bring that down to quarter notes, which is just this. All down strokes. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Now I'm going to grab an A sus four. An A sus for what is an A sus for? Here's an A chord. An A chord. I'm, I play my A chord that way. You may use a different fingering. That's fine. There's lots of fingerings for an A. I'm going to bring my pinky up one fret. You may be putting a different finger up one fret, but as long as you're on the third fret of that B string, it's an A chord with that guy moved up. A sus four. Now in this case, it's a slash E because we've got the E in the bass. That's going to be common for the intro of this main riff. So if I, I'm going to go on an. Uh, I'm just going to give that a strum. <laughs> and then pedal the bass. Pedal means to repeat it like that. That's your backdrop. A sus. Now tuck it back to an A. Tuck that pinky back. There's your pedal again, then to an E. That's it in its simplest form. That's what it is. But remember, stages of development, that's a good way to start it. Now you've got a framework here. I'm gonna go back to A sus four. You may have to think about that. A, spread the pinky. See how my wrist, beep, my wrist kind of sends my pinky that way because my pinky is not my smartest finger. Pinky up like that. I'm told uh, by a very reliable source that uh, pinky, uh, the curl in the pinky is a good technique like that. If you're trying to get your pinky on straight, uh, you may find it doesn't work. Some people we call it the knuckle buckle where this this knuckle buckles and you just can't get it on there but try to get that wrist nice and low I've heard that referred to as Van Halen pinky with that curl like that so that can't be a bad thing right so I'm just gonna for now I'm not worried about ups and downs I'm just gonna go strumming that guy A sus4 to my pedal back to an A and to an E two three four one two back to A sus4 I'll give you a second to get there three and a four and a two a to an E. Suspense, eh? 
Good. Now, hey, you may want to stop tape right there and get that together if that's new to you. If there's any hesitation getting to those chords, um, your right hand will just give up. We'll go back to the eighth, though, in a sec, but that's a good framework for sure. Um, now, there's something called on the beat and off the beat. I've written this down here. Um, uh, chords can be strummed on the beat, which is when your foot is down, or they can be strummed off the beat when your foot is up, like in the middle of a tap. So the first, this one goes uh, off, on, off, on to start. So off, on, off, on. What does that mean? So I'll get the pedal going. One, two, three, four, one, two, A sus on the up, off. So there was an upstroke, okay? Upstroke, because it's it's on the up beat, uh, typically on done on an upstroke, downstroke done on the down beat when your foot is going down. So really I'm just following the foot. Here it is again, two bar count. One, two, three, four, one, two, here comes three, four, and one, two. On the beat, off. Okay, let's do that again. So I'm gonna load up on an A sus4, okay? Loading up on an A sus4, pedal. One, two, three, four, one, two, on the up. One, three, four, off, on, sorry, on, <laughs> off. On, let's do another 10. Loading up on an A sus4. We're gonna get the pedal going for two bars. One, two, three, four, one, two, on the up. On the down, on the up, on the down. Good. Now the second part of the intro, both on the up. Okay. So here's an entire intro. Let's do it together. Here's your count in. One, two, three, four. One, on the up here. One, two, on the down, on the up, on the down coming. Two on the up. A sus four. On the up. A. And we are into the body of the song. We're into the body of the song. I would highly recommend uh, doing that. Get that going on. Um, it's such a catchy riff. I love it. I absolutely love that. And it's suspenseful, right? Um, and then and only then, try to get to the eighth notes, if that appeals to you. I gotta tell you, I kinda like the quarter note too. It leaves a lot of space in there. But the eighth notes would be, if I'm loaded up on an A sus4, I, I have to continually alternate low E to the D string, low E, B. Well, you can wait to do this until you're really comfortable. So one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and here it comes, on the up, on the down, on the up, on the down, on the up, on the up. And you're in the body of the song at that point. Let's review that a bit later on. Um, but. It, Number of stages of development. If you if you try to jump too far too quickly, you might get frustrated. So be comfortable with that quarter note, okay? And we'll build the song together that way. Now, how about this? Uh, the body of the song. Um, you've got your E chord. Very very important technique for this song and many many others out there. I'm going to play an E chord, and then I'm, I'm going to stop it. E stop. What am I doing there? E stop. So I'm strumming that E chord, and then I'm releasing the pressure. Oh, but that doesn't stop it. So what am I saying? It's still ringing. You can hear it ringing. You don't want that. So I'm going to go, I have to almost doot, roll my wrist over because there's open strings involved in an E chord and you have to choke them out. So it's going to look like this. Strum, kill. Strum, kill. So think of it this way. One, and two, and three, and four, and. So that's imitating the piano, right? Piano's bonking away like that. So we're really like piano keys doing that. Piano. Uh, 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 piano keys, literally donk, 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 like that. Now, to get control of that, um, you may have to spend a wee bit of time just getting control. Wrap your wrist around, but remember, you want to keep the E shape just sitting on top of the strings rather than pushing down. Keep that E shape, otherwise you're having to fumble to, to regain that shape on every strum. You don't want that. Boom. That's a good technique. So it's the hardest thing to do when you're playing strings that combine fretted notes with open strings because you've got this, these lingering uh, notes and sympathetically ringing notes as well. But if I go to a bar chord, G sharp minor. Um, now you're seeing the Roman numeral four. Watch those Roman numerals, bottom of your sheet there. Uh, Roman numeral four, uh, there's a G sharp minor. Uh, Roman numeral four means that the, the chord is on the fourth fret, okay? The chord is the first fret in the diagram 
The first fret in the diagram is the fourth fret on the guitar. That's what that Roman numeral four means, so watch out for that. So I'm barred straight across, it's really an E minor shape just from below that. I'm barred straight across that fourth fret. Now that's fourth fret from the capo. Watch out, the capo is now zero. Okay, that can be confusing, but it's fourth fret from the capo. I know some of you may write to me and say, well, that's not really the name of the chord then. Don't worry about it. This is how we communicate as guitar players. If there was a piano player or a bass player or a singer in the room, I'd have to call it something else, but don't worry about it. We won't invite them. So uh, G sharp minor, <laughs> sharp minor. And notice uh, for me, I've got my middle finger over top of my first finger, like that adding a little bit of pressure. Okay, so it might eliminate some of the dead spots. Okay. And I got my, my elbow into my ribs like that, helps to keep my wrist straight, I find, and I'm down nice and low like that. My thumb is low. If your thumb is up like that, your first, your knuckle's gonna uh, bend in your first finger, and that's gonna rob you of all your squish power. So get that thumb down, 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 and there he is. Maybe if your middle finger's long enough, he can get on top of there and kind of lend a hand. There we go. Now it's easier to do that technique with a bar chord, because you just have to lift up. There's none of this choke stuff, so you just lift. Okay. There we go. Let me run through the chords here. Then you're going to go to a C sharp minor, which is directly underneath it. Again, fourth fret, like an A minor shape there, C sharp minor. It's just like a B minor, but up two frets. C sharp minor, don't let the name scare you. Same deal here. Sounds like Roxanne. Good, and now there's an A major. That's on your fifth fret. It's a major bar chord. It's an E shape, E form bar chord. That's it again, thumbs nice and low. Nice and easy to choke him out. Now that bar chord is completely new to you. This is a fantastic song for you, but remember everyone struggles with them at first. There's nothing wrong with your hand or anything like that. And you just gotta find that right amount of pressure. If you start really cramping up, you don't have to squish that hard. A little bit of pull from, this is the best advice someone ever gave me, a little bit of pull from the left shoulder pulls the, uh, pulls the string. So there, I would never do this, but there's an, there's an A chord with no thumb. That implies that I'm pulling from here and I, I could do that all day long without getting tired. So it's a combination of squish and pull. And that'll save you icing down your wrist when you're finished with this. Uh, and we're back to an E. Okay, so let me play a verse very, very slowly here, just to give you an idea of what we're up to. Uh, every time you see a chord name, it's four beats. So here, I'm in the verse. We've done the intro, Dr. My eyes. One, two, three, four. I'm gonna put something in the middle in a sec. G sharp minor, slow parade, fears, C sharp minor, without crying, A, I want to, E, understand. Two more E's coming. I have done all that I could. G sharp minor. See the evil and the good. C sharp minor without high. A, you must help me. E, if you can. Okay, that's the verse. And that would be an ideal exercise if that's new to you, stop tape, come back later. Come back later, work on that a wee bit. We'll do a slow play along. And uh, it's coming in about 150 beats a minute. We'll go down to 120 for the slow one just to give us all a fighting chance. Um, now, there's something in the middle there that's kind of missing. That big hole, right? Um, when you're feeling up to it, and only when you're feeling up to it, I'm gonna do this. On the dead stroke, on the up stroke, in between, I'm gonna play a ghost stroke like that, or a percussive stroke. Better to call it a percussive stroke. So while the chord is deadened, you come up on upstroke. You don't have to hit all six strings, even the top three will do, the thinnest three will do the trick. And that's gonna drive it along, like. Fills the hole. Uh, I'll go to a G sharp minor. Now at first, when you're practicing it, it may not sound entirely musical. People might think you've lost it when you're sitting there listening to that. But when you get it cooking, subtle. So it's really 
really drives it along. Uh, but these things uh, tend to be learned, um, you know, in slow motion to get the actual mechanics and then you gradually make them musical. So don't be disappointed if you got to stop tape, throw a movie on and just sit there mindlessly. Your body doesn't want to do that upstroke when the chord is dead. It's saying, hey, there's something wrong, but we want it. It's a percussive, percussive stroke. We're getting there. Now, all we have to talk about now is the chorus. The chorus things just open right up. You hear the bass start walking. It's beautiful, Doctor My Eyes, C sharp minor. It is your fourth fret bar chord, fourth fret from the capo. Um, to give it a bit of contrast, we don't do this anymore. We go wide open. One and two and three and four. And now hear that swing. E. Tell me what is wrong. C sharp minor. So long. And we're back in the intro. Now, a couple things to talk about. Wide open. Swing. Uh, it may not come naturally if it's new to you, but um, if you put the accent on two and four, you kind of lean the music a bit. Accent on two and four, typically where the snare drum sitting. So it's this one and two, three, four. One, two, three. Remember, your, inst your instinct might be, if you haven't done this before, your instinct might be to, to put the accent on one and three, okay? That may feel more natural. This is far more musical, and it's something everybody has to kind of get in there and do. One, two, and three, four, one, two. I'll sit on C sharp. Back. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two. Uh, to an E. Tell me what is was I C sharp minor again. Now, uh, this chord may be new to you. It's a B. I've written it this way on your sheet, like that. Now, that is a, um, that's probably the, uh, I'll call it the big kid's way to play it. Sometimes I'll catch myself just playing a power chord version of that because it is a rocky kind of song, uh, which is just uh, first finger, second fret. It's a partial version of that. And I'll give it to you. You've got the one on, on your diagram. So here's a power chordy B which is a second fret with that A string from the capo, of course, fourth fret and fourth fret again on the D and G. And I'm only hitting those three strings. See, it's got that rocky effect. And because this one can be hit and miss and uh, my tend to lean in that direction. You're coming from a, a C sharp minor and all you really have to do is drag it two frets lower and get rid of the middle. And you're back to your, your intro in there, okay? Let's do a chorus slowly together. Here it comes C sharp minor. Jump in with me. Two, three, four. My eyes. E come. Tell me what is wrong. C sharp minor. Was I who B stop. Do, 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 do. E. A sus four. A, and you're into the second verse. So I didn't warn you, there's the, there's that intro bit at the end of the uh, of each chorus, okay? So that's what went on there, it starts on the A. Watch out, after that first chorus, it starts on the A, not the A sus four, okay? Uh, that's all written on your sheet clearly there. Um, so how about this? Um, I'll involve the fabulous Beat Buddy, happily affiliated and have been for, uh, geez, two years now. It'll be two years next month that we've been doing this. Uh, I've been using their products for many years. But Singular Sound and the fabulous Beat Buddy and the Aeros Looper, love them. Uh, for those of you that want to know, this song is coming in at 150 beats per minute. I've got my, I'm using the Jazz 4 pattern. It's a swing kind of a pattern. And it's just a nice rise cymbal with the odd little fill. I like it because uh, I wanted everyone and myself included to hear the guitar parts really clearly so it's not too cluttered. I really like that. Jazz 4, which comes on your Beat Buddy and at 150 beats a minute. I'm going to bring it down to 130, okay, to take the edge off. That's just a matter of dialing down the tempo here. You'll see the big screen there, nice and easy. And uh, let me get it going. See that visual metronome? See that? Uh, maybe you can't with the lighting here, but it's so easy to keep your place because you can see it's telling you what beat you're on. I love that. You can stare it down while you count it in. Um, how about this? I'm going to take right from the intro, slow play along, do what you can. The thing about play alongs is you want to keep going. And if, if, if something really, really bad happens and try to meet me in the next chord or the next section, whatever it might be, we start with the intro. It starts with a two bar. I'm just going to do quarter note intro, not this fancy bit, not the eighth note. So nice and easy. Here it comes. And go grab those sheets, play along. Three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two. Here we go. On the 
up. Verse 1. Eyes have seen the ears. G sharp minor. Slow parade of fears. C sharp minor. Crying. A. I want to. E. Understand. Another E. E. I have done all that I could. G sharp minor. A. Help me. E. If you can. Chorus wide open, my my eyes. E, tell me what is wrong. C sharp minor, because I am wise. I'm stopping to be here. Open. Intro. A again. E. A sus. A. Next verse. I have wandered through this world. G sharp minor. Moment has unfurled. C sharp minor. I've been waiting. A to waken from these dreams. No, e, E again. Go just where they will. G sharp minor. I never noticed them until. C sharp minor got this feeling. A is later than it seems. Chorus. C sharp minor. Wide open. Tell me what you see, C sharp minor. They're crying. B stop. They're too late for me. Sus this time. A. E. Okay, now it's going to be the instrumental section is just the intro round around. It goes four times after a, a second chorus ends. So believe it or not, that was a slow play along. That's about uh, that's up until the end of the second chorus. That's a slow play along. That's 130 beats a minute, or 120. The song comes in 130. Sorry, um, the song comes in 150. So let's bring it right back up to 150, and again grab those sheets and the fabulous Beat Buddy. If you go to uh, Singular Sound, their website, uh, you, if you use the promo code GAW10, they give you 10% off. The Aero Slooper and the Beat Buddy, uh, just use that promo code, helps to support the channel, greatly appreciate it. The Beat Buddy talks to the Aero Slooper, they're in crazy good together, they're amazing. They also work beautifully separately, so if you're just getting a Beat Buddy or just getting an Aero, you're still going to be in very good shape. Uh, several kinds of Beat Buddies out there, um, do your shopping and use that promo code GAW10 and thanks for those. We've been talking to people that uh, people have emailed, they've been buying them with questions and they're just loving it. It's a whole lot more fun than a metronome so I highly recommend keeps you honest too rhythmically so here it is all the way through grab your sheets patreon.com slash guitar at work and a whole bunch of other songs as well and uh, let's just give it a go see what happens nobody's gonna get hurt that's fast all right I'll show out the lyrics as best I can and some of the chords here it comes intro one two one two three four one two three four one here we go Only up. In verse. G sharp minor. C sharp minor without crying. A. Want to E. E again. G sharp minor. The evil and the good. C sharp minor without hiding. A. Happy if you can. Chorus. C sharp minor. C sharp minor, unwise. B, open for a solo. That's your intro. A sus four. A now second verse. E, I have wandered through this world. G sharp minor, moment has unfurled. C sharp minor, I've been awakened. A to awaken. E from the dream. E go. Just where they will. G sharp minor, I never noticed them. Until C sharp minor got this feeling. A later than it seems. Second chorus, C sharp minor, wide open. Tell me what you see. C sharp minor. B stop. It's too late for me. A. Instrumental coming up. Instrumental one. 
do that four times. This is two. This is three. Last time, Colin. Last time. Last chorus, Doctor Maya. Then I see the sky. So sure, man. He's stuck. It's out there. Woo, that's fast. Is that actually, that was 150. It felt so fast after going 130. Holy smokes. I hope you held on. And if you didn't, that's okay. Go back round and round and do better the next time. Do it, get a little more the next time, get a little more the next time. Remember the real time play alongs are all about recovery skills, right? Um, a lot of us are not playing with other people. So it is a really great thing to do to have, force yourself to get in there. Now, hey, you have mechanics to do to cover as well if, if bar chords are new to you and you don't you didn't stand a chance there right so a mental note just go back in there throw a movie on practice going from one bar chord to the next you know get your technique down look at all the things we talked about so hey thank you for coming back thank you to singular sound for another great year with you guys and uh it's been a lot of fun proudly affiliated with you so head to the, uh, their website grab their uh, uh grab a beat buddy and an arrow slooper and or an arrow slooper and uh, I appreciate your subscribing it means the world subscribe hit the thumbs up button has meant the world to me and comments hit the little bell notification thing that just tells when new videos have come out and again head to patreon.com slash guitar at work there's a whole bunch of songs up there for you just go grab it and uh, let me know how you're doing with everything I'll leave you out with that one two I want to go ah.